All right, today we are going to review enzymes and the main points. So to start off with, enzymes are a type of protein, which we've been learning a lot about recently, and their main job is to make a chemical reaction go faster. They can do that by breaking molecules down, like taking a bigger piece and breaking it up, or they can take smaller pieces and put them back together. And one of the main things we talked about is that enzymes only ever match one substrate. So just like the key to my door can only open my door because it doesn't match anything else, an enzyme can only work with one substrate. Some examples of enzymes we've learned about um, include enzymes in DNA replication like helicase and polymerase, um, and then all the enzymes that help with digestion by breaking down your food. So how they work. When you're looking at these pictures, these diagrams, the enzyme is always the thing that looks the same in every single picture. So for example, there's this right here, this tan thing going all the way across, and nothing ever happens to it. It doesn't break apart, it doesn't get changed into anything else, so I know that has to be the enzyme. Then up on the left, we have the substrate. The substrate is always what you start with. And then the substrate is going to match the enzyme right here. You can see that they've got the perfect shape to match each other. That spot where they're going to match up is called the active site. So the substrate and the enzyme come together like this. The enzyme helps to break apart that substrate. And then you end up with two products. The products are always what you end with. They're always on the right. Um, another important point about enzymes is that they all have an optimum temperature. We talked about how that word optimum means best. So the optimum temperature for an enzyme is the temperature at which the enzyme goes the fastest. So if you go above that temperature or below that temperature, the enzyme is going to slow down. The reaction won't happen as fast. So take a look at this graph for a second that shows you the optimum temperature for the enzyme turnip peroxidase and try to figure out what you think the optimum temperature is. So to figure this out, I need to know what's on each axis of the graph. You can see that on the y-axis it says enzyme activity, so how fast the enzyme is going. So more activity would mean it's working faster. So I find this spot on the graph where it is as high as possible, which tells me it's got a lot of activity. And then if I go down to the x-axis, that's going to tell me what the temperature is, which looks like it's right around 45 degrees. So we've talked about a few different things that can affect the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. We saw a bunch of these when we did our toothpickase lab. So one of those, like we just talked about, is temperature. Going towards the optimum temperature will speed it up, but if you go away from the optimum temperature, that will slow it down. Um, using the incorrect substrate will slow a reaction down. Like when we were doing the toothpick lab and you added in the paper clips, the paper clips made you move a little bit more slowly because they got in the way. And pH. So the same as an enzyme has an optimum temperature, it has an optimum pH, which is the best pH level for that enzyme. So if you go away from that optimum pH, the reaction will slow down.